On March 3rd, 2005, 62-year-old St. James Davis and his wife, 61-year-old LaDonna Davis, were visiting their son, Mo, at the Animal Haven Ranch outside of Bakersfield, California. They were there to celebrate Mo's 39th birthday, and they were visiting him at the Animal Haven Ranch because Mo was not a human. Mo was a chimpanzee. The Davises claimed that they had rescued Mo from Tanzania in the 60s when Mo's mother had been shot and killed by poachers, leaving him an orphan. Now, as a side note, it is much more likely and widely speculated that the Davises simply purchased Mo illegally as a pet. But that's really neither here nor there. Either way, the Davises, who had no children of their own, really had raised Mo like a human child. He slept in a bed, he ate human food, he used the toilet, he was with them all the time. But despite being raised like a human child, and despite the fact that chimpanzees are 99% genetically similar to humans, Mo was not a human. He was still a wild animal. And wild animals, particularly chimpanzees, do not make good pets. They are, like I said, completely wild. It's not a domesticated species. And they're massively powerful animals. An average chimpanzee will stand four feet tall, weigh between 90 and 120 pounds, even though they can get much heavier than that. And they possess the strength of between five and ten adult human males. So you can see why it's probably not a fantastic idea to keep one as a pet. This would become evident in 1998 when Mo would attack a police officer and mangle this officer's hand. I don't know how or why authorities did not take Mo away from the Davises at this point, but they didn't. It wasn't until the next year in 1999 when Mo attacked their next door neighbor and he bit off one of this lady's fingers or at least part of one of her fingers that finally animal control came out and they took Mo away from the Davises and relocated him to the ranch. Now, obviously the Davises were devastated by this, but they visited him all the time. And of course, this day, his birthday was a particularly special day. Donna had made a cake, a birthday cake for Mo. They had set up this picnic table where they were going to have the party at with him. And they're in the process of setting this up. LaDonna was actually cutting the birthday cake when she noticed out of the corner of her eye, just kind of like a black blur. And she looks over and there's two adult male chimpanzees running at them. Now, bear in mind, Mo is still in his cage and all the other animals that were in this facility, at least in their enclosure, were supposed to be in cages while the Davises were in this facility with the animals. Nobody was supposed to be out running free. But somehow, these two chimps had escaped their cages, and now they're running at LaDonna. So she turns to her husband to tell him, but before she can, the first chimpanzee jumps up on her back, and he pushes her into her husband and she hits uh saint james and she wraps one of her arms around his neck but the chimp grabs her other arm pulls it down to its mouth and just immediately bites off one of ladonna's thumbs i completely severs it she screams her husband sees this he grabs his wife and he throws ladonna behind this picnic table and then he gets in between these two chimpanzees and his wife to protect her and St. James is a big man. He's, he's, he's a heavier set guy. He's, I mean, he's not obese, but he's just a big, bulky guy. He's six foot two. He used to be a running back. Uh, you know, big dude. But against two male chimps, there's not a human on earth that can really do much. These two chimpanzees immediately jump on him. One jumps up on his chest and the other one jumps on his legs. So I'm going to tell you what each chimpanzee does individually, and I'm going to try to do it in order, okay? The chimp that jumps up on his chest, it immediately, with its mouth, latches on to St. James's right eyebrow, and it tears it off with its mouth. Then it, gra it latches on to his nose with his mouth, and it bites his nose off. While it's in the process of biting his nose off, it takes one of his fingers and digs it into St. James's right eye socket, gouging out his eye. After it's done doing that, it moves down to his mouth, where it bites off his lips, and then it bites like on the inside of St. James's mouth, 
where it bites out some of his teeth. Now I have a hard time kind of imagining that and it makes me a cringe a little bit, but that's what it does. With, with the chimpanzee's teeth, it bites out St. James's teeth. Then it takes its hand and it reaches up to the left side of St. James's face. It grabs him and uses its fingernails basically to peel the skin and flesh off of one half of his face, like off of his cheek. And that flap of flesh goes flapping over St. James's other eye. So now he can't even see anything. He's missing one eye. There's a big chunk of flesh hanging over his other eye. And this, chimp this chimpanzee that's up here continues to just bite him on the face and the skull. It's basically just eating him alive, eating his face. The chimp on the bottom, as the one is doing its thing up top, St. James can feel the chimp on the bottom biting off his fingers one by one. It's just moving from one finger to the next, biting each one of his fingers off. Then... It goes and it bites and removes part of his buttocks. It removes part of his uh, abdomen. It removes part of his thigh. It moves down to his genitals where it bites off St. James's testicles or at least one of his testicles. And then it goes down to his feet where it begins gnawing on his foot and biting off his toes. So all of this is occurring basically at the same time. This man is literally being torn apart, eaten alive by these two chimpanzees. LaDonna is screaming, as is, of course, St. James screaming. Eventually, the son-in-law of the owner of this facility comes running out with a firearm of some kind. I don't know exactly what kind, but comes running out with a firearm and he is able to somehow safely shoot these two chimpanzees to death. And it is only once he has shot them, each one of them, several times to death that this attack ceases. And St. James is obviously in really bad shape. He is rushed to the hospital where he is put into a medically induced coma. He would end up requiring well over a dozen surgeries over a long period of time. He wouldn't be released from the hospital for six months. Um, of course, he would never truly make a full, full recovery as he is missing several parts of his body now. LaDonna only ended up suffering that one injury, which was the removal of one of her thumbs. Both of them... Uh, do not really blame the chimpanzees. They think that maybe because they spent so much time with Mo at this facility while these other chimpanzees were watching, that they became jealous. And when they saw, you know, this cake being prepared and knew that they weren't going to get any of it, Mo was going to get all of it, and they weren't going to get any attention, that they beat their way out of their cages and just went ballistic. Like I said before, chimpanzees are highly intelligent and highly emotional animals. That is definitely not outside the realm of possibility. So that's that's kind of what's speculated that, that sparked that attack. Had Mo been out of his cage at the time, you know, who knows? Maybe Mo would have moved to defend his parents. Maybe Mo would have joined in the attack. Maybe he would have done nothing. Who's to say? I don't know. If you have any thoughts on that, I'd be curious to hear. Either way, Mo did not participate in the attack. He was locked in his cage. Coincidentally, or maybe just an extra piece to this story, Mo was moved to a different facility sometime later. And in 2008, Mo escaped that facility. And to my knowledge, has not been found since. He's just been roaming around in the wilds of California in the woods somewhere. You know, or, you know, unfortunately, maybe he's deceased. Maybe he was bit by a snake. But as far as I know, he was never found. If he was, if anybody can dig anything up on that, I'd be curious to hear. Um, if anybody is still around at this point, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you liked what you heard, I would love it if you'd consider leaving a like or subscribing or sharing any of the above or all of the above. I would be forever indebted to you. It'll help the channel grow, potentially help me afford some better equipment so the videos and the sound eventually gets better. But if you don't want to do any of the above, that's totally fine too. I'm just super thankful that you guys are here. Thank you for the watch. I hope you guys have an excellent new year.